Hi there, my little yarn goblins and fiber trolls. Welcome back to another episode of At the Table. My name is Christopher. I am Flannel and Pearls. And if this is your first time with us, first and foremost, I want to say thank you. And I want to invite you in. I want you to feel welcome to come in and join us in this space. This, this is a place for friends. This is a place that we set aside that allows us the opportunity to put ourselves first. This is a place where we can say, I'm going to stop for just a moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to make sure that my glass is full before I start trying to pour into someone else's. Especially this time of year where for so many of us, the world is starting to cool. It's starting to slow down. Things are moving at a bit of a different pace than they were during the summer. It's such an important thing for us to be able to set aside that time to allow ourselves to say, as much as I love everyone else and as important as they are to me, I'm important too. So what we do here is we craft together. And it doesn't matter what your craft is. That's the best part. You could be weaving. You could be spinning, crocheting, knitting. I've had some people who have done watercolors, woodworkers. They reached out to me and they said that they were whittling. Love that. It doesn't matter what you do. What matters is, is that you find a seat here at the table where there's always room for you. Now, what I'm going to be working on today is I have just finished off a pair of mittens. I made these out of some fisherman's wool in natural brown, and I just love them. They're so thick. They're so hardy. I know that they're going to keep my fingers nice and toasty all winter long, which for me is very important because I am a part of the always cold gang. <laughs> I am always chilly and my fingers are the first things to go. But I've just finished these off, but they need their ends woven in, and they need a button attached right here on the flap. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Now you can work on whatever you want. Feel free to pause now. Go gather your stuff. Go gather your whip. Get your project together, your tools. Maybe you're starting something new, and this is an opportunity for you to set aside a little bit of time and get that you know, right off the ground, which is always very exciting. If, actually, if I get through this and we still have enough time, I'm actually, I've got some yarn back there and I'm going to work on a swatch for a new sweater. So by all means, if you want to, you know, get a, a new project going, you're welcome to do that. So feel free to pause it now. I'm going to play a little bit of quiet music while we work together. Feel free to come back whenever you're ready. Secretly, I actually finished these weeks ago, like two weeks ago. But I have left the ends unwoven in because I moved right along to my second pair. <laughs> I was so excited to cast on the next pair that I didn't even finish these. I said, oh, I'll get to those ends later. Eh, it doesn't need a button yet. It'll be fine. <laughs> but that kind of ended up perfect because now I get to do this with you all. Thank you. 
You know, some people absolutely hate weaving in their ends. It's like their least favorite thing to do. They will put it off for as long as they possibly can. But between you and I, I actually really like it. It's one of my favorite things to do. Okay, that's... That's a bit of an exaggeration. It's not a favorite thing to do. I don't think it's anyone's favorite thing to do. <laughs> but I really like it. I find it very meditative. Although I will say, back in February of this year, I made one project that had, it was a marled sweater. So every stripe had two yarns on it. And there were so many stripes. There were 32 different colors. You can do the math on that. Two ends for every stripe. Oh, I think it took two days in total just to weave in all of those ends. It took so long. <laughs> and I said, then I will never do something like this again to myself. No, 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 no. We will find another way. But it does make me curious. How long do you wait to weave in your ends? Do you like to get it done right away? Make sure that you can consider the project finished. You get to mark it as complete as soon as those ends are woven in and you block. Or are you more like me? You set it aside and you say, you know what? I'll get to it. I'm going to get to I'm, I'll get to it. It'll, it'll be there. It's not going anywhere. Those ends will be there when I'm ready.
I used to be way better about it. I considered it the final step, the most important one. I would get it done as soon as physically possible. I would say, that's, I'm go, okay, final stitch. Now I have to sit down and I have to weave in all of these ends. It's not a complete project without it. And I guess I just got, I just, I, I just got busy. I got busy and I started realizing the allure of just setting it aside, <laughs> letting it sit. Every time I go, this is not my first time making this pattern. I've made these mittens. Um, I think this is my fifth pair in different fiber. <laughs> I love it. It's one of my favorites. Um, this is the Twisted Mitten by Anika Knit, which if you're interested, I'll go ahead and I'll link that below. But it is one of my favorite sort of beginner mitten patterns. It was the first pair of mittens I ever made. And I guess I've felt very loyal to it ever since then. I've made it so many times over and over again. I've done it from uh, semi-tonal, speckled, a pair of uh, a pair that were made in tweed. I've done super washes, and now I've done a non-super wash with the fisherman wool. And it's just lovely. It's so simple. It's very quick. You can get it done in just a just a couple of days usually which I love. But the part that takes the most amount of concentration by far is placing the buttons. I always want to make sure that they are just in the right place. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you've had a great day. 
hope that it's been relaxing and kind to you. I hope that it's been a very gentle day. And if it's just now morning, I hope that you're giving yourself enough space and enough time to be the kindest and fullest version of you for the day. That's something that I'm trying to do much more with myself lately, is in the morning, instead of just getting started, making my tea, and just sort of jumping into whatever it is that I have to accomplish, that I'm giving myself the opportunity to make sure that I can be the best version of myself by allowing myself the time and the energy to get ready for what that demands, because it does. Being the fullest version of yourself, it, it demands something. And I think that we oftentimes forget that. It's not, it's not anything that comes free. And it's certainly not something that comes naturally all the time. Sometimes it takes effort. I think that could be a little further down. Let's see how easy this is going to be to pull out. I think I'm just going to have to cut it. <laughs> oh, and I have to be so careful not to cut the actual stitches of the mitten in the process. Got it. It's one of my favorite parts of this. I love, I love that we get to just, we get to try new things together. We get to make mistakes, undo them, do them again. That's sort of the, the beautiful lesson, I think, in craft is that it never has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be right the first time. The last time we met together, we talked about that practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes progress. I think about that all the time.
because I am new to this and I need all of the practice and the progress I can get. go. All right, let's see if that does it this time. Oh, and thank you for all of the suggestions. The last time that we were here, I, I was talking about how much I needed one of those little uh, yarn bowls to hold my, my little ball of yarn. And <laughs> I had so many people say, you don't need a yarn bowl, you just need a, a teacup or a little or a little dish. And so I pulled out this little stoneware pot that I have in my collection. This came from my uh, grandparents' farm in southern Illinois. When they when they passed, uh, the estate itself was broken up and sort of just distributed amongst all of the children and the cousins and the aunts and uncles and the family just sort of went through it figuring out what it was that they what they would like to keep as a, a memory of this extremely integral part of our family this this hub where everyone gathered holiday after holiday a place that held so much history and somehow i got really really lucky and what my dad set aside for me during all of that was a massive collection of original stoneware from the 60s and 70s. There's 80 pieces in total. It's massive. It's a huge collection. Which, when I first got it, was <laughs> I was living in a studio apartment that had very little storage. And so it was a question of where on earth is this even going to go? Where will I keep this? But I have carried that from apartment to apartment, home to home, for 16 years now. and it's not going anywhere.
Well, I think I got that one just right. Excellent. See, it just takes a second try. That is one thing that I, I notice so often among the people in my life, and I'm curious if it's the same for you, is that we are so often unwilling to offer ourselves the kindness and the forgiveness, the patience and the grace that we extend to others, that we talk about and often to ourselves in ways that we would never tolerate someone talking to the people who are closest to us. And it can be very easy to forget that everyone around us is oftentimes just doing the best they can with the circumstances that they've got. And that includes us. So, if you have to cut the button out and you have to do it again, that's okay. It's even all right if you have to do it a third time. I think that looks really nice. All right, that is one button down. One more to go. I hope your project is coming along well. Tell me, I, I love it. I absolutely love it when you tell me what you're working on. So please let me know, let me know. I have found out about so many interesting, fun patterns because of you all telling me your projects. It's like this wonderful international crafting circle that we have here that we all just get to share with one another and you know, sort of just be excited, right? Allowing ourselves the opportunity to be excited with other people who share the same passion, which that is, that's really the beauty of it is that even if it's not the same craft, it's the same passion. So what we're doing is we're you know, making a different world for ourselves and for the people around us. With our hands and with the materials that we use, we are shaping something that is our own design. It's something that we want to live in. We didn't choose to buy it. We didn't go to a store. We made it with our own ingenuity and our own hands, sometimes our own feet, all sorts of things. Maybe our mouths, you never know. But the important part is that it was something that we agreed to, we consented to, we decided and said, yes, 
this is what I want. Oh, I hope you like my backdrop. <laughs> We've had the most incredible storms here lately. It's just one day after another of the most incredible winds, tons of rain, and it knocked a bunch of branches down from the oaks and the maples that stand uh, outside of our yard, or inside our yard. And instead of just, you know, letting them sit there or Worse yet, you know, collecting them and just throwing them away, I decided that I'd bring them inside and share that with you. That we could all just have a little bit of a little bit of autumn inside. I shook them very hard before I brought them in, just in case there were any any little friends, any little friends hiding on them. <laughs> Not that I'm opposed to the little friends with all of their extra legs, but They've got a place. They have a place, and that place is outside. It is officially autumn here officially. The leaves are starting to change, the days are drawing so short, and the shadows are incredibly long. I woke up this morning and when I went downstairs to say hello to Howell, which by the way I have told her that all of you say hello, but when I went downstairs to say to ha uh, hello to Howell this morning, it was the first morning that I could see my breath. Just these big plumes of steam. I told you last month that September is all about apple, and October is all about pumpkin, and yesterday we made my favorite pumpkin treat, which is this delicious pumpkin bread recipe that I have that has a toasted pecan and oat crumble on top of it. I think you may have recognized a bit of a trend. I'm just now realizing that I talked about a loaf cake last time. I'm talking about a loaf cake this time. <laughs> what can I say? I am, at my heart, a country baker, and I, I love a loaf cake. <laughs> but it is so wonderful. It's filled with the flavors of brown butter and toasted pecan, and all of the spices that you would expect. We've got molasses, cinnamon, allspice, ginger, clove, nutmeg. It's like the perfect bite of autumn right there on your fork. And I was so delighted with so like, how many of you made the apple chai pound cake from the last video. I was so tickled. So if you'd like to make this one as well, if you'd like to join me in my little autumn treat, there is a link below for where the recipe is published. It's on my Substack. And I hope you like it as much as you liked the apple cake.
I want to thank you all so much for the incredibly kind things that you have said in the comments. Maybe it seems a little cliche to say, but I, I really do mean it from the bottom of my heart. I don't have the time always to, to respond to every single one of them, but I want you to know that I do read them. And you all are so generous and it, it really touches me. Like it really does make me uh, so appreciative that we get to spend all of this time together. Like it, I'm a little bit lost for words, <laughs> so, but I, I, I do want to, I want to say thank you. Just a couple of mittens. There are little buttons on them. I think all that's needed now is just the, the little loop on top. I think that mittens are one of my favorite things to make. I would say socks and mittens. I really enjoy them. And I think it's just because of one, how fast they are to make. And two, it's just such a, uh, a kind gift to give to yourself or to somebody else. Maybe it says more about the fact that my toes and fingers always get cold first, that I like making socks and mittens. But I don't know. I just, I love the ability to just look down and see something that I've made. Smiling back up at me. I like it. I said the same thing about socks, and here I am repeating myself about mittens. The loop is always the hardest part for me. It always takes the most trial and error. I have to go back and forth and back and forth. Figuring out the right length number of chains to make. Actually, crocheters tell me, is a link, is that a stitch? Is the whole thing a chain? Is it a one chain, two chain, three chain? I, it's been so long since I've done any crocheting, I, I could never remember. But I know you'll tell me, I know you will. You can tell that I am nowhere near as elegant with my, cro with my crocheting as I am with my knitting. 
or at the very least it doesn't feel that way. You just got a very long look at the top of my head. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was nice. <laughs> With October almost completely done, I hope that my Canadian friends had an excellent Thanksgiving. I know that yours is a little bit earlier than it is here in the States. I hope it was a great one. From what I understand, it's very similar to what we do here in terms of the same types of dishes and similar traditions. For me, Thanksgiving is one of, if not the most important, holidays in my year. Simply because I think that Thanksgiving is every cook's favorite holiday. I just think that that's, I think that's the case. At least here in the States. It is, it's the holiday where we get to shine and we get to just dig up all of the best old recipes, all the stuff that means so much to us, things that have sometimes been in our family for a long time. Or, in my case, it gets to be an opportunity to blend the things that are familiar with things that are my tradition, things that I bring to the table that, that are important to me. And I love that. It's an opportunity to appreciate and explore things that matter most to us. already started planning my holiday baking. <laughs> I just love to get a head start on it. 
It's, uh, it's something that I look forward to all year long. And so I start laying the groundwork for that usually sometime in August. <laughs> Mostly it's just so that I can decide if there's anything new I want to bring in, anything different that I'd like to try. That way I have the opportunity to understand the recipe, maybe even try it once. Because there is nothing worse than trying something new on a day where there's already some pressure. So if I can, I always like to give it a bit of a test run. But this year, I think I'm just going to stick to the classics. We moved into this house back in June, and we're going to spend the holiday here. And so I thought, you know, if we're, if we're going to spend the holiday here, our, our first Thanksgiving, then it should be traditional. It should be, you know, what we're used to. Playing the hits. I would love to know, is there something that you are looking forward to making or, or eating? Is there a specific traditional item that around this time of year you get to enjoy? That's something that I think is so incredible and sort of thrilling about this time of year is that, at least for the Northern Hemisphere, it doesn't matter if you celebrate Thanksgiving or Christmas. It, it, it really doesn't matter. That's the, the beauty of autumn and winter is that Regardless of what holidays the food may be attached to is that every culture has these traditional autumn and winter dishes that come out around this time of year. And I love finding out about them. I just love it. It's one of my favorite things to, to research. So if you have a favorite, please let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to learn something new. And you'll have to forgive me, I feel like I've talked about food almost this entire time. <laughs> Clearly I've got it, I've got it on the brain. The temperatures drop and my oven turns on and all of a sudden that's all I want to talk about. I just want to knit firm woolly things and bake delicious stuff in the oven. And I think I am just about done. I think that this is going to do it for me today. So as soon as I get this loop done and the end woven in, I think that's going to be it for me.
Let's try them on, all right? <laughs> Let's see if I got it. Well, I think so. I do. What do you think? I love this pattern. Again, these are the Twisted Mittens by Anika Knit. You can find the pattern for that uh, down below in the caption. And for those who cannot use Ravelry, this one will be to their direct site. That way you don't have to go through Ravelry. This is two times in a row that you've been able to see me finish a project. I feel like I'm setting a precedent that will not be continued. <laughs> I don't peel through, I don't peel through projects that quickly, but just because I'm done for the day does not mean that you have to be. You're absolutely welcome to keep on crafting for as long as it makes you happy. Keep on going. Or if you're ready to take a little bit of a break along with me, feel free to do that too. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I want to thank you for coming back into this space, for taking a seat at the table. I want you to remember that anytime you need it, Anytime you need a reason to escape the ongoing chaos of the world around us, if you need a place where it is quiet and warm and safe, there is always a seat at this table for you. My name is Christopher. I am Flannel and Pearls, and I want to thank you so much for being here today. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. For ad-free versions of my videos and other exclusive content, head over to Flannel and Pearls on Patreon. You can find me there, on Instagram, and on Substack by clicking the links below. Take care, my friends.